I'm Johnny Smith, aka Car Pervert, and I welcome you with open arms, open headers, and open source software sharing to the Late Break Show. In this episode, I'm going to be talking to you about this car. This is my wife's dream car, and I bought it for her as a complete surprise about 13 years ago now. And a lot of people have asked why I haven't done an episode to date, but today we're going to do that, and we're going to walk you around the car, explain why we own it, what we like about it, what we don't, and then it's going to end up somewhere very special for hopefully a new lease of life. That was a gunshot, it wasn't me. Welcome to my car. <laughs> my car. This is your dream car, isn't it? That's yep. why we have it because, and we've had it a long time. I was trying to think more than 12 years. Yeah, because it's older than our kids. It's older than our marriage and it's older than our children. <sighs> yep. We were, I was living yeah, she'll in... be with me when all the rest of you are gone. <laughs> your relationship with the, with the fig started how? It started after um, a big night out in London. Of course it did. Big night out, big sesh, walked past one on the way home actually. And everybody else carried on walking past and I just sort of stood there and took lots of pictures and, and drawled over it. <laughs> and camera you know, phone pictures. Shelved it, yeah, like really old camera phone pictures. Early camera phone. Early camera phone pictures. Yeah. Met you a couple of years, well actually I, had, I already knew you, I'd known you for years, by that point, but, um, but I wasn't in love got with you together. Then. You totally were, totally were. Yeah. And then um, we got together, and I told you about the car. I showed showed you pictures. Yeah. Of the car and probably other pictures as well, but <laughs> car pictures. And then um, you bought me one to dig yourself out of a hole. It was a big birthday. I'm not going to say what, because then you'll know how old I am. The, bir the big birthday came and went and he didn't do anything. And it was upsetting. And he was in the doghouse for a long time. And this is how he dug himself out of the hole, which, I mean, let's be honest about it, is a really good way to dig yourself out of a hole. You know, I came home from work one day and he said, just ask me, I think he just asked me to come and help him lift something or move something. And we went into the garage and she was just there. She was just there. Yeah, and then he kind of just handed me the keys and, and said, you know, she's yours. Which was lovely and very emotional and I was just flabbergasted. That's kind of how the story went. Well, I bought you one as a total surprise because I know that you really like them. I'd not long started working on fifth gear and I, I thought I've got enough cash to buy one, probably not a mint one. A mint one at the time was sort of six or seven thousand quid. And you, did, you didn't think I was worth a mint one? No, I probably didn't think so. So I thought I'd buy one that's pretty good and I could, I could, um, I could improve it a little bit as, we, as you used it. I think it's so important for, um, if you're going to own an older car, to have a connection with it. It's got to do things for you every time you spend time in it. It doesn't do things for Well, do you know what as well? I actually, I mean, in fairness, I'm not massively dressed up today. I've, you know, I kind of look like a jungle scene that's vomited up oh, on like, itself. You look like you're going to run a bar in Chamonix. Yeah, but with a jungle element to it. Yeah. So, however, when I normally do drive the, drive the fig, which is mostly in sort of spring, summer, yeah. I, I feel I always dress up for her. Always, so always put a bit of jewellery on, always put some lipstick on, make sure my hair's okay. I just, you know... What makes she, you want to do that? Of course you've got to do that. You can't get out of this car looking like a piece of shit. You've got to get out of this car looking, you I've know... Done that. I've done that loads. Well, All of the little niggles I've had with this car, which is mostly with the engine, it all disappears when I know that you drive it and you still have a grin on your face and you still love it. Because if you didn't still love it, I would have bloody I love it, it the kids love it. No, you bloody wouldn't. Right. Just to be perfectly clear, do you understand the concept of a gift? <laughs> I, I'm not saying that seriously because yeah. probably no. throughout the whole of this film you just keep talking as if basically, you know, it really... 
could sell this you car. could do yeah we, could we couldn't we couldn't sell this car i could sell this car because last time i checked it's actually in my name say your name say your name okay picture the scene 1989 tokyo motor show japan is in the middle of a huge relationship with the classic car world lots of classic cars are being exported from america and britain and europe to japanese collectors nissan unveiled this at the 1989 tokyo auto show to rousing interest i mean like arousing potentially interest um, and then two years later they make it and they only make it in 1991 they were only ever going to make 8,000 of them, but the interest was so massive, they decided to extend the production run by 12,000 to make 20,000 in total. But there were so many people that wanted it, they in the end, they had a lottery system, so you had to like have your name picked out of a Japanese tombola, I, I don't know, to actually just a, get just one. Just a guy. Well, it could just be a guy with a big sack. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's how you got a Figaro. The engine is not my favourite thing. No. You see those four cars that Nissan made around the same time, the BE1, the PAO or PAL and the S Cargo were all naturally aspirated one litres. This, well, they decided to put an MA10 ET, which is turbo. So it's a 987cc eight valve turbo and it's unnecessarily complicated <laughs> and annoying. Like all pretty women are. What, unnecessarily annoying no, and complicated? No, no. You said it, I said nothing. Well, it's layers, isn't it? What I love about the Figaro is that actually it's a really good idea. It's an exotic body on quite mundane drivetrain. Because the Micra is the ultimate just get in it, close the door, don't care about it and it will just work. If only this had the Micra, the true Micra engine, but it has the Micra everything else. an older car now and things go wrong and parts are becoming more and more obsolete and uh, you know it, it irritates Johnny a lot and he's bless him he's actually put a lot of time and effort into this car just to kind of keep her on the road he loves cleaning her it's a bit weird and pervy loves cleaning her um, and of course when he'll say no, don't get it, don't get it dirty. Like he's just told me then, don't get it dirty, don't get it dirty. He totally wants me to get it dirty because then he can clean it. They're all kind of the same. All automatic, all right-hand drive. All pretty. All very pretty externally. Lovely. And this is Internally, the... hang on a minute. Uh, She's pretty inside and out. She is actually. And this Japanese obsession with kind of classic cars retro stuff back in the late 80s, early 90s is echoed in this because they tried to make it look like a 50s... British or European car um, and that's why weirdly you don't see any Nissan badges on it there's this lovely little art deco sh uh, shape like clamshell shape which which g goes on throughout many it parts does, of the yeah. car it says Figaro and it says Nissan in letters about a centimeter long and on the back on the chrome number plate surround it says Nissan again in about a centimeter so it's just a Figaro like she's, a she's subtle. like she's a sub brand shout. I love the fact that it when you reverse it beeps like it's a dustbin lorry or something massive. I know, like you, I know. But it's, <laughs> it's but, just not. No, well, there's two things. Lorries beep for other people, don't they? This yeah. is beeping for you. Beep, beep, beep. I forgot to mention to the viewers about the turbo timer being a 90s. Oh, that. Do you know what? That's a really important thing to mention because that freaks people out. It does. The amount of times I've turned this car off, yeah. got out, and of course, it's still t it's timing down and the engine's running. Yeah. And... Um, People literally just have followed me to stop me and tell me. You've left your car running. You've left your car. You've left your car. I'm like, it's okay, it's fine. I know no, you actually have. And I, but to the yeah. fact that they don't believe that I'm okay with it, or they, yeah. you know, no, no, you've, you need to go back. One, one it's mostly men, actually. I'm just going to say. A lot of people are really interested in the idea of owning a Figaro, but they're scared because they don't know what to look for. So I thought I'd put a couple of pearls of wisdom of a buyer's guide, if you will, into this feature. Remember, there's a lot of them in the UK, but a lot of them don't get garaged, and really, rust is the biggest enemy. So let's just have a quick look round. First things first, bumpers. 
Bumpers are still available, believe it or not, as new old stock items, but they're not uh, cheap. And this has new old stock bumpers on it now. They're really thin, they rot really easily, and they dent easily. They're three piece, and the middle sections are the cheapest to buy. The corner sections, because they get bumped more, um, are worth the most. And these are probably about 200 and something quid each. So factor that in. If it's got a good set of bumpers, it's probably over 600 quid's worth, 700 quid's worth on the car. These are just bolt-on plastic. You won't have any problems with these. The trim is all obsolete pretty much on a Figaro, so you'll need to buy Figaro trim secondhand. There's a lot of secondhand cars out there being broken for spares because a lot of these cars have succumbed to rust over the years, so that is good. These hubcaps are called the Polo Mint hubcaps, and they're two-piece. The chrome bit is separate to these. These white bits are actually quite rare. They're about 70, 80 quid to buy. So if they're cracked or damaged, just bear that in mind. The suspension, the brakes and the steering is all pretty much Micra. So none of that really is expensive. But if you need a steering rack, you can get a new steering rack for about 300 pounds. This is probably the most rust prone part of the Figaro. The rear quarter panel, the rear arch, and where the floor pan meets the sill basically inside here. This car had it when I got it. These were starting to come through with rust on uh, the rear arch. This has had a pair of rear arches. You can get panels for them now, finally. Um, and this part of the sill, it's got a huge piece of chrome embellishment. You want to look behind there, really, or in there to see if it's hiding any grot. There's a little chrome end cap which goes in the end of these. We don't have them. They've fallen off. They're impossible to find. So if you ever find any of those, look after them, glue them in or something. And on the other side, where the fuel filler flap is, they tend to rot inside the fuel filler flap and you'll start to get bubbling. So really look carefully there. The interior is probably the party piece of the Figaro. It's beautiful. Pipe leather seats. All, like I said before, all the instrumentation is bespoke for this car. So as a result, a lot of it is obsolete. The things that I would look out for personally and things I looked out for when I bought the car is they all have air conditioning. Check that the air conditioning works because even if you don't use it you want to know if there's a problem with the circuit. Check that the heating works and the motor for the blower. If the car has problems starting in park it's a worn little bush that costs about four quid and I managed to repair it in about 45 minutes underneath the car. It's to do with the gear, the automatic gear linkage. It's not a big problem, uh, but it's a notorious fault with Figaro's. The head unit is this amazing bespoke uh, Clarion thing, which was designed for the Fig. I've actually had the upgrade where you send it back to Clarion and they change it out um, to put an MP3 compatibility um, socket in it. Um, and you can also upgrade the speakers. There's a Figaro specific speaker you can buy, about 50 quid for the pair, well worth doing. That upgrade for the head unit's about 400 quid, so it's expensive, but it's one of the most important aspects of the car. If you're looking at a Figaro and it has cup holders, it has an emergency flare down on the passenger footwell, and it has a parking stick sticking out of the, um, like a little weird mast looking out the front corner. They're all really desirable period accessories for the car. Unfortunately, Chopsis doesn't have any of those. You will find these plush seats and they are really comfortable. The leather does get cracked and sun damaged often if the top's been left off the car. You can buy leather products to feed them and bring them back, but if they're beyond redemption, there's a lot of second-hand Figaro's being broken for spares and you can get a pair of half-decent chairs out of another car. I've managed to bring these back from the brink really. The carpets, I'll lift them up. The original carpet sets, they suffer from stains. Now the previous owner of this car in Japan, or previous previous owner, was a smoker. So the headliner was a bit tacky and the carpets are a bit stained from, from damp, I think. You can get the carpets dyed um, which is fairly cost effective or you can replace the whole carpet set which is a big job because you've got to take the whole interior but what I would say is most of all check for damp in the carpet because damp inside the car is a sign that it's leaking and that means there's a problem with the roof the drainage holes or the actual fabric top and that could signal rot underneath another really important thing to look for on a Figaro is the electric windows the electric windows can be temperamental because the car's getting old now. The driver's side is a one-touch 
um, thing. The buttons are bespoke, the switches are bespoke. They get really expensive. Uh, driver's side ones particularly. Uh, I've had issues with both that and there's the one touch module inside here and the motor. Combined, it can cost you two and a half, 300 quid for all of those pieces. So check that the electric windows do work. And if you own a Figaro, use them regularly. And if you get the chance to, take the door panel off to upgrade the door speakers, give them a good lubrication while you're in there, all the mechanism makes a hell of a difference. Down there by your right knee while you're driving is the fuse box. So it's always good to have a look around the fuse box for corrosion and stuff like that. And like I said before, if the carpets feel damp or they look a bit stained, you need to look up for where there's been water coming in. And that takes me on to the sunroof. All Figaro's are convertibles. The good news is they don't have an electric mechanism. It's actually quite a simple mechanism. So the mechanism very rarely goes wrong. There's a switch down by where your left knee is in the driving seat, which is a solenoid. Lift this up, it's kind of like an old dicky seat, and you'll see there's two latches which are on rods. They should be working, you'll hear them. When it comes out, just going to grab it here, like so. We'll put the roof down. In here, you can check, check this for rust in here, because it's around the top of the arch, it's always worth looking in there. The fabric top of the roof is split into two sections. This is the sort of crinkly bit and this is the solid padded bit around the glass rear window. This bit gets discoloured, you can tell, because this is newer than that. We had a new roof put on it probably about 10 years ago now. You can fit them yourself. They're a DIY kit essentially, but I, was, I didn't trust myself and they shrink and I just wanted it to fit nice and taut. You can buy the kit for probably about 250, something like that, 275 quid. Um, and to fit it will probably be another couple of hundred pounds. But once it's on and fitted, it will last for a very long time. And when that's up, look inside these channels here for clogged up debris, because stuff that falls off trees gets down there and people never clear out the drain holes and that can start rust if you haven't cleared those out. And also in these front corners, you can get rust on the roof. So look out for bubbling roof there where the moisture just sits and just festers. Look, frameless doors, very Japanese spec. Yeah, um, my little little switch, little, little thing. So you've got a slide there, you've got two latches, not electric. I feel like I'm on like Wheel of Fortune or something. You know where you're doing the thing? Yeah, I do. You know where the you're demonstrating the prize. In. Yeah. Hang on a minute, I'm doing it back off. Oh, didn't you want some help? Oh no, go on then, you do no, it. No, I think I'm quite capable of putting my own roof down. Go on then. Anyway, back up and then she lifts. Just, let's just, let's just, let's just. And then you have to push it really far down. Well, it does have a strap, but you never use strap. it. I never, I never use it. Yeah. Put it down, and then that does stretch like that, but. Yeah, but you never do that. Oh, no, I don't do that. You... I just. If you are used to seeing the new Fiat 500 convertible, they've taken the design from this. So it still has a, a metal roof but it's like a full length sunroof with a glass back window that goes at concertinas back into this. The weird thing about the Figaro is it's basically got two boots and they're both rubbish. The engine's often quite worn because they've sat in lots of traffic or the three speed automatic gearbox is really low ratio. So it revs quite high at motorway speeds. In fact, it doesn't particularly like being at 70. This has been completely rebuilt and I, my engine started using a lot of oil and it needed a new turbo. The turbo's there. A new turbo for this car is about four to 500 pounds plus fitting. You wanna check that that one's okay. The engines when they need rebuilding will typically cost about 1600 pounds, something like that. Or you can get a secondhand engine from a used uh, salvage car and put it in, but you don't really know the condition of that couple of other things to look at with the the ma10 engine is engine mounts the mounts for this car are expensive three engine mounts i think there are they're about 400 quid just for the pieces of rubber ridiculous all the usual things you need to look out for which is start the car up make sure the oil light goes out check the condition of the oil on the dipstick um, watch for smoke um, from cold and when it's hot and when you're using it quite hard these are very sort of revy little engines, 75 horsepower, 987 cc, four cylinder, not three. Um, but if it has a problem idling, it could be the idle control valve, which is a little bolt on piece down here, about 150 quid. 
but really I would get somebody to look thoroughly over the engine. The hardest thing to get with the engines if it needs a full rebuild are the pistons, the correct low compression pistons. I had a real trouble getting those. That kind of concludes my whistle stop buyer's guide for a Figaro, but really be good idea to join the club, ask questions on, there's a good forum, and also make sure rust is really the most expensive killer of Figaro's. Rust and the condition of that strange little MA10 ET engine. Don't let it put you off though. Go on then, so what do you like and what do you dislike most about the thing? Um, I, I mean obviously the way she looks, but yeah. if I had to pick, I would pick the interior. It's your favourite? That's a favourite, I just, okay. oh, love it, love it, love it. I think the interior is amazing. And then dislike, I would have to say just the fact that it's, um, it's just too slow. It's, the engine's just rubbish on it. You know, I love her and I love the way she looks, but the engine's just... It's just not acceptable. It's just not acceptable and she's too sluggish and, you know, you have to, I can't go on proper road trips in her, which would be yeah. great. So, yeah. you know, a lot of people have suggested that we should EV it, we should eat electrify her, you know, and give her a bit of a, a, a transplant. So I think that would be perfect. Well, I think you should hold that thought. Okay. Stop the car. Stop the car. Come on, now I'm gonna have a drive. Let's do it. Strike while the iron's hot. Okay. Oh, can you close that door? I'm not getting it in. No, no. There's a bottle of Prosecco in the fridge. I'm going to go some. It's a lovely day. Just have a nice autumnal walk. Love you. <laughs> Come on, let's take you somewhere. Let's just drive to Bristol. Let's take you and book you in for a heart transplant. Because that's what you need, Figaro. It's what you're crying out for. Because you're a lovely car with a forgettable, fundamentally disappointing drivetrain. It's time to review. Through these gates is a very cool company, a very stealthy company that's over the last year or two has made huge inroads into the world of aftermarket EV components and conversions. And that's why I've brought this Figaro here because we want to make this car electric. Now I'm at a place on the outskirts of Bristol in the middle of nowhere on a farm where all the best coolest businesses are these days. This is a place called Zero EV and Zero EV is a company which specializes in converting normal piston cars into EVs and selling the components that are associated with it. And there's a bloke called Chris who's going to walk into shop right now. Aren't you Chris? Yes. <laughs> this is the way it works. It's pro, isn't it? <laughs> So I know you guys for being able to um, obtain like Tesla drive units yes. and build modules and things like that. Tell us what your main business is now. Uh, so main business now is actually development of kits. So that's okay. where we're going with it. Complete bolt-in kits, no modifications to the vehicle. So yeah. it turns up on a couple of pallets and then bolts in. Everything okay. pre-terminated, pre-tested, ready to go. Yeah. Um, and then we've also got to the online store and all the parts and support. But mainly business to business. It's sort of the way we're focusing at the moment to yeah. allow loads of other EV shops to open worldwide in theory and yeah. start offering this because there's nowhere near enough around. Now, when, when I came in, I didn't reference the fact that the MX-5 project was here. If you don't know about this, Zero EV have their own YouTube channel and they have documented the transformation of this from a piston-powered MX-5 to a full EV. It's still in its final prototype stages, but I'm actually going to be doing a separate video on this car, driving it soon so bear with me on that one but in the meantime it's worth noting that this is a car which obviously drove in as a normal mx5 
and Zero EV are developing a kit where you can convert it to EV. So a very similar principle to what is hopefully going to happen to the FIG. Has it been a while since you've seen a Figaro? Luckily, yes. <laughs> You're not a fan then? Let, let's, I, I, I actually don't mind them. They're, they're OK. I, I'm surprised you drove it here, but... I'll drive anything, Chris, you know me, but yeah. the, the, the bit that's actually really annoying and I will never miss is the unnecessarily complicated engine. It's got a turbo, I mean, look at it. But I think it, it could be the ideal candidate, what with many of them living in cities, yes. as an EV. And yeah. there's enough yeah. space, obviously, here, but there's also a little weird hatch at the back. Yeah, there is, and there's the fuel tank space as well. There's the fuel tank space. So, so for, it's interesting for me, when I bring it in like this, what, what do you look at? What are, the, what are the parameters that you look at to convert this to EV? For us, it's the first thing is working out what you want from it. Yeah. How much range do you want is going to be quite a big thing. How powerful does it need to be? Yeah. And then budget is another big thing. Yeah. Because they're not the most expensive cars to buy. No. So you end up spending more on the EV side than you do for what the car is actually worth. Yes, you do. Um, a bit like the Fiat 500s, yeah. I suppose, yeah. those sorts exactly, of things. Exactly, exactly. Do you ever consider, like, I know you use a lot of Tesla units, for example. Do you use units from other manufacturers? Like, I'm thinking if, if I wanted to use a Nissan Leaf as a donor, yep. is that a good idea? Probably not a bad idea, um, okay. because you get everything from one vehicle. Yeah. The only thing with the Leaf is the size of the battery. Which is big. Because it's quite a small car. Yeah. Um, so they're a high voltage system with quite a big battery. Yeah. So trying to fit that in this is quite difficult. Motor wise and stuff would be ideal. Motor would be but okay. But it's getting that battery. Yeah, okay. It's compact enough to fit in this little vehicle. And if you were to use like a Leaf motor, but not Leaf batteries, is that just becoming... It could be done. It can be done. Yeah, yeah, so we've got, with the cow, we've got different orientations of the, the way the batteries are packaged. Right. To get more, small, smaller number of modules, but the right voltage. Yeah. So that's another option. This is the boot. Be prepared. Originally, when I was pre-thinking about converting it to EV, I thought it, to make this a more useful boot, it should be on like a rail. You pull it out, put stuff in it, push it back in, but it's got this weird... If you can really call it a boot. It's not really. It's not really. The, 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 the engine bay is the main event, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty much. I'll drop the convertible roof and I'll show you the cabin area as well, so you get an idea. Now, this is one of the coolest bits of the Figaro, is the, the cabin, because it's all bespoke. They made all the, the steering wheel, the switch gear, is all Figaro specific. Mm, it's all obsolete now, obviously. Art Deco. Yeah, but what I have done, because I'm a hoarder, is when I've bought some bits off salvage cars over the years, I've actually got a spare set of these switches. So if we needed to fit any auxiliary switches, I've probably got some we could repurpose maybe. Brilliant. You've obviously got these lovely old analog, this is kilometers, they didn't, didn't do a mile an hour one. Uh, fuel, uh, water temp, and then a clock. Really want to look at how to reuse those mm. to convert it from can bus to analog mm. and just, did you, just swap that out for motor temperature and state of charge and try and keep everything as standard as Ex possible. Exactly, yeah. That's the, the space you've got to kind of play with, so I don't know. So nothing inside? No, not really. There isn't, is there? I mean, obviously, can, there's a transmission tunnel to run any cables and things, but... Has this actually done 162,000 miles? Kilometres. Oh, kilometres. When I it's bought a lot for one of these. Yeah, when I bought this, uh, we think it was the highest mileage UK Figaro. One final thing that I, I, I forgot to ask is I'm starting to appreciate when people do an EV conversion and they make it look like it's an engine when it isn't. You know, aesthetics. <laughs> you know, like, for example, you could, you, could, you could mimic the valve cover or you could... Um... You could? Yeah. No, you're not a fan of that sort not of thing? Really. No? Just shut the bonnet and have it all safe. And... I understand for a show car. Yeah. But for... I suppose our approach is making sure it's reliable and engineered properly. Repeatable. And then aesthetically you can do bits afterwards, yeah. Yeah. But if you design it around it looking like an engine, there's so much wasted space and so much more potential you could have fitted in that car. I, I bet, yeah. Um, that 
it sort of takes away from the fun. You can have it so it looks really pretty, it's form but you function. can do 30 miles on it. <laughs> or yeah. you have it so it looks a bit yeah. more boring, but yeah. you can get 100 miles out of it. So it's, that's, there's, there's always a... Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. want to have that on there at the compromise of losing 30, 40 mile yeah. range. No way. Yeah. Very good food for thought. Possibly. Thank you very much for watching The Late Break Show. If you've enjoyed this or if you've got any more questions about what goes into a conversion like this, comment below and if I can't answer it, I know a bloke who probably can. And if you haven't subscribed, go and subscribe because there's going to be a couple of other videos coming very soon based around Zero EV. Goodbye.